You may know that Jews are known as the most skilled at lending money with high interest rates in the world. At the same time, they are also dominant in the Nobel Prize. But you may not know why they are called Jews. And why did they have to re-establish their own country after centuries of wandering? They had to re-establish their own country. Today, we will take a few minutes to explain the history of the Jewish people. To reacquaint ourselves with this mysterious and often troubled nation, it should be noted that, the following content represents only the perspective of religious studies. It is not entirely a true and reliable historical account. This video does not engage in any proselytizing. It aims to popularize relevant humanistic knowledge. Please be civil in your comments. Maintain respect for the religious beliefs of others. According to the records of the Bible, Adam and Eve were the earliest humans. They had a descendant named Noah, the one who built Noah's Ark. Noah had a descendant named Abraham. Abraham lived with his tribe in Ur of the Chaldeans, which is in the southern region of present-day Iraq. Later, his whole family migrated to Haran, which is near the upper reaches of the Euphrates River. According to the canonical Bible, the Lord said to Abraham, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. Eventually, Abraham arrived in the region near the sea, called Canaan. God also made a covenant with Abraham. According to the Bible, I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants, for generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants. I will give you and your descendants the land you are living in, as a possession forever, and I will be their God. So Abraham settled in the land of Canaan. He had a grandson named Jacob. One day, Jacob encountered a mysterious man, perhaps an angel, perhaps God. The interpretation of this man's identity remains controversial in religious studies. They wrestled as soon as they met, and wrestled until nightfall. As recorded in the Bible, the man asked Jacob, What is your name? Quote, Jacob replied, My name is Jacob. Quote, the man said to him, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, which means Israel. Israel had a total of four wives, and had twelve children. From then on, all his descendants, they were all known as Israelites. The eleventh son among them was called Joseph. He was favored by his father. This led to his brother's jealousy and mistreatment. When he was seventeen years old, he was conspired against by his brothers and sold into slavery. Later, an Egyptian official bought him. However, his father was kept in the dark. He was unaware that his son had become a slave. He mistakenly believed Joseph was dead. After Joseph arrived in Egypt, his master noticed his intelligence, and appointed him as a steward. Later, Joseph's ability to interpret dreams, gained him favor among the nobles. Eventually, he was called upon to interpret a dream for the pharaoh, which led to his promotion. When he was 30 years old, he was appointed as the vizier of Egypt. Later, when he was 45 years old, a great famine struck Israel. His father, Israel, led the family to seek refuge in Egypt. Joseph recognized his father and brothers, and generously forgave them. Due to Joseph's influence, the pharaoh warmly welcomed Joseph's family, so the land of Goshen was given to the Israelites to live in. At first, everyone lived in peace. But as time went on, conflicts between the Israelites and Egyptians increased. The pharaoh started to worry that the growth of the Israelites would threaten Egypt itself. So he ordered all the Israelites to be enslaved. Thus began a 400-year period of slavery, until around 1250 BC. Among the descendants of Israel, there was a young man named Moses. One day, Moses saw an Egyptian slave master mistreating one of his own people. Filled with anger, Moses killed the Egyptian slave master and began his own journey of escape. During his escape, God appeared to Moses in the form of a burning bush and spoke to him. He encouraged Moses to return to Egypt to rescue his fellow Israelites. God said to Moses, Do as I say, and I will bless you. Quote, After Moses returned, he led the other Israelites in their escape. They were pursued by the Egyptians along the way until they reached the Red Sea. Moses found themselves facing a vast sea. They had nowhere to escape. According to the book of Exodus, Moses stretched out his hand to the sea, and the Lord used a great east wind. The sea water receded overnight. The water separated. The sea became dry land. Moses led the people in escaping from the seabed. After crossing the sea, Moses waved his hand, and the walls of the sea immediately collapsed, drowning the pursuing Egyptians. According to the account in the book of Exodus, after Moses crossed the Red Sea, he arrived at Mount Sinai, where he also met God. God gave him the Ten Commandments and Laws. Moses inscribed the Ten Commandments on stone tablets. Eventually, the Israelites returned to their promised land. These laws were the covenant between the Israelites and God. This covenant became the foundation of Jewish faith. Therefore, the Jewish people always consider themselves as God's chosen people. 
because in their cultural and religious beliefs, they are a nation that made a covenant with God. Fast forward to 1000 BC. Israel experienced its first division. The descendants of Abraham's 12 sons developed into 12 tribes. One descendant of the 11th tribe was named Saul. He united the other 11 tribes for the first time, establishing the United Kingdom of Israel. By the second generation of kings, the kingship passed to David, a descendant of the fourth son, Judah. This is the lineage that many of us art students come from. The statue of the Great Way that has been copied by all. The third generation is the son of Great Way, Solomon. Solomon's most important contribution was in Jerusalem, building the first temple. In the fourth generation, the kingdom faced its first split. Ten tribes in the north did not recognize the king's legitimacy. They established the kingdom of Israel themselves. While the two tribes in the south continued the bloodline of the Great Way kings, led by the tribe of Judah, established the kingdom of Judah. The time came to 722 BC. The Assyrian Empire invaded the Canaan region. The kingdom of Judah in the south survived by becoming a vassal state of the Assyrian Empire and thus survived. In Hebrew, Judah is read as Yehudi. In modern English, it is read as Jew, which is the same as Jewish in Chinese. Therefore, the Jews are a branch of the Israelites, and their faith is Judaism. By 597 BC, the Babylonian Empire defeated the Assyrian Empire. They drove the Jews out of their promised land. They also enslaved the Jews. Until 532 BC, Babylon was defeated by the Persian Empire. Only then did the Jews regain their freedom and returned to their promised land. Later, the Jews were ruled by the Roman Empire. The promised land of the Jews became a province of the Roman Empire. Until 70 AD, a war broke out between the Jews and the Romans. The Jews were defeated. Jerusalem was also plundered and destroyed. From this exile, it marked the beginning of the Jews over 2,000 years of wandering. Due to differences in religious beliefs and cultural values, the Jews have long been persecuted around the world. However, for over 2,000 years, they still long for the promised land of God, to return to their homeland. Jewish communities began to gather in the southern region. Finally, in 1948, the Jews were resurrected. This is our Israel today. We can take a look at the flag of Israel today. The six-pointed star in the middle is the symbol of King David. Most of them believe in Judaism. But the most important difference between Judaism and Christianity is, Judaism only accepts Jewish people. Because in their beliefs, only Jewish people are considered God's chosen people only they are eligible to convert. Of course, there are also Jewish people who do not believe in Judaism. For example, modern Western philosophy proposes the theory of the optimal democratic regime. The purpose of politics is freedom according to Spinoza. He was reported by classmates because he claimed that God does not exist, and was betrayed by classmates, and was ultimately persecuted and expelled by Judaism. In the next episode, we will talk about the origins of Christianity. Where does the name Christ come from? Follow me to explore philosophy from a common perspective. Friends, see you in the next episode.